Good morning, friends. Hey, I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. It's Monday. Yeah. Boy, another week. Here we go. This week, we're going to be focusing on the coral reef and where is the Great Barrier Reef and what would we find in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about coral reefs and what we would find there. Okay. That's what our focus is for the next two weeks. So we're going to be learning a lot about the coral reef and what kind of plants and animals we'll find there. Okay, let's do our song. You ready? Hello and how are you? Hello and how are you? Hello and how are you? How are you today? I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine and I hope you are too. I am fine today. Smile at me and wave hello. Smile at me and wave hello. Smile at me and wave hello. Wave hello today. Hola y como estas? Hola y como estas? Hola y como estas? Como estas hoy día? Yo estoy bien y como estas tú? Yo estoy bien y como estas tú? Yo estoy bien y como estas tú? Como estas hoy día? Nice job, my friends. Let's do the calendar. Are you ready? Let's do. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Today is Monday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Yesterday was Sunday. Domingo, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado. Domingo, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado. Hoy es lunes, hoy es lunes. Today is Monday or lunes. Let's count the calendar. See how many days we have. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventy, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Do ten bars. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. And what comes after twenty four? That's right, twenty five. Two five, twenty five. And then yesterday was 26, 26, and that means today is 27. Okay, so last time we were at school, it was the 24th, and then we added something, and now it's the 27th. How many did we add? Well, to figure that out, we have to start on 24, here, and we have to count our jumps to 27. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. We counted three. So 24 plus three equals 27. Let's see, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yep, it sure does. It, that's what it makes. All right, and let's do this. Today is Monday, April 27th, 2020. There we go. All right, and we better check our weather today. How is this weather? We better find out what Weather Bear is telling us. Oh, Weather Bear says it's going to be warm today, but we might see some sprinkles. So partly cloudy, warm, and a little rain maybe. So a little rain. So we've got to put up our partly cloudy and possibly... A little rain. 
Saturday we got a nice, it was sunny, and then it was rainy, and then it was sunny, and then it was rainy, and then it was sunny and rainy, and I got to see a double rainbow. I don't know if you were outside and you got to see it, but oh, it was beautiful. Wasn't it fun? I got to see a gorgeous rainbow and I took some pictures of it. I hope you got to see it too. Let's do our pledge. Are you ready? Can you stand up and join me? Perfect. Oops. And put your right hand over your heart and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And let's grab our earth flag here and let's say, put that right hand back over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the earth and all the life that it supports. One planet in our care, irreplaceable with sustenance and respect for all. There we go. And let's get to our poems. Let's do our um, spring poem. You ready? I love all the seasons, but springtime is the best. Let's put on our raincoats. Now we are all dressed in the rain. We love to play. And this is what we hear. Pitter patter, pitter patter. That's the season's cheer. And our April poem. We only have a few more days of our April poem. Are you ready? Here we go. In April, I will go away to far off Spain or old Bombay and dream about hot soup all day. Oh my, oh once. Oh my, oh twice. Oh my, oh chicken soup with rice. And then we have a new poem today. I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can. It's called Hug a Tree and it goes like this. Why not hug a tree today or pat it on its bark? Find the tree that you like best and stand beneath its shade. Stretch your arms around its trunk and hug until you fade. Imagine the birds that have lived in your tree. Imagine the squirrel in its nest. A tree is home to all that come, a perfect place to rest. So put your arms around your tree, whether it's short or tall. Hug your tree, you'll feel so good winter, spring, summer, or fall. Pretty nice, huh? I like that one. It has a lot of quick and easy words in it. Mm -hmm. We can find our very first quick and easy word, A-L-L, -L, it's easy to spell. And we've had the word that, the at, that. And we've had the word come, C-O-M-E. Yeah, come and from. And we can find the word the, oh, that's a really important word. It comes up a lot, T-H-E. And we can find you, Y-O-U. And we can find the word your. All you have to do is spell you with an R on the end. Y-O-U-R, your. Pretty cool. Nice job. All right. Now, like I said, we are going to be talking about the coral reef. Um, today's read aloud is called The Brilliant Deep by Kate, Kate Mesner. Beautiful book about the coral reef and how the very first person who found out that he could help save the coral reefs by transplanting coral in uh, a new place and rebuilding a reef even though it had um, a lot of it had died so that's a really great book um, we're going to be looking at a lot of different books and a lot of different videos about the coral reef and I have a challenge for you every time you read a book or come across a new word in a video or a new word in a book that you've never heard before like coral or polyp or reef or urchin. There's lots of new vocabulary words when we talk about the coral reef. My challenge to you is to draw a picture about every new word you find and then hang it up 
in your room or on a special wall that you pick that could be your coral reef wall. And that way, you're going to have a big giant wall full of words that's going to be your coral reef wall. Okay? Try it. And we're going to have a lot of words. Let's see if you can fill the whole wall with new vocabulary words that you learned just because we've been working on the coral reef. Now, I want to talk about a little bit about the reef before we go here. Um, I want to talk about where we can find the reef and one of the reefs, the biggest reef in the whole world is called the Great Barrier Reef. And it is found very close to Australia. Look at that book. Okay. And I'm going to read this book real quick. It's a really short book that tells you a little bit more about Australia. Okay. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see the pictures because this book is kind of tiny. Okay, there, that's better. Coral Reef in Australia. All right. Boing, boing. Where could you watch kangaroos jump? The continent of Australia. A continent is a big piece of land. There are seven continents on Earth. Australia is the smallest. There's Australia down here. It's the smallest continent. Australia is the only continent that is also a country. Australia's capital is Canberra. Let's see. The island of Tasmania is also part of Australia. This is a forest of eucalyptus trees on Tasmania. Tasmania is the little island Right there, that's Tasmania. It's kind of underneath Australia. The oceans surround Australia on all sides. Surf's up, Australians swim and surf in the continent's oceans, ocean waters. It's go, fun to go swimming and surfing around Australia. And here it is. Off the northeastern coast of Australia is the Great Barrier Reef. It is the largest coral reef in the world. There's a good picture of the coral reef, just part of it. And here's an underwater picture of the corals. Animals called corals live in the warm waters around the reef. The Great Barrier Reef is so big that you could see it even if you were in space. That's how big and long it is. It's amazing. The highest parts of Australia are in the south and east. Catch some air. Australians enjoy skiing and snowboarding there in the winter time. And their winter time is in our summertime. It's opposite. Farmers grow wheat in the lowest parts of Australia. The land lies near the middle of the continent. Deserts cover much of Western Australia. Watch out for snakes, the desert death adder. Ooh, that's a poisonous one. There's the desert. Look at how red the earth is. And that's where they grow lots of wheat in the middle. But in the Western part is all desert and it's very, very hot in the summertime. The grasslands of Western Australia feed huge herds of cattle and sheep. These are Merino mer mer no sheep. Excuse me. They are kicking up some dust as they go into a paddock or a holding area. Look at all that dust they're kicking up. You can barely see the sheep for all the dust. Sheep is one of the main animals that they raise in Australia along with cattle. Remember the jumping kangaroo? There are marsupials. They are marsupials. Marsupials raise their babies in a pouch. Do you see the little joey in the pouch? Yeah. And here's another animal of just Australia, the platypus. Platypuses are found only in Australia. They have a wide flat nose called a snout. 
munch, munch. This koala is eating the leaves of a eucalyptus tree. See that one? They love eucalyptus. Acacia trees are found all over Australia. Some kinds of acacia trees have bright flowers. Most Australians live in large cities along the coasts. Sydney is the continent's biggest Sid city. Sydney. One of Sydney's famous buildings is the Opera House. Here, singers perform in musical plays called operas. That's the Sydney Opera House. And there's another picture of Sydney, Australia. It's the biggest city. Few people live in the outback. That's that desert. This is the open countryside in the middle of Australia. Zoom! Some people in the outback get around by airplane. It's so big, not very many people go there. So there's not a whole lot, so you have to put go on planes. There's the outback. And here is a beautiful, amazing thing. Australia has many interesting parts. Do you know about Ayers Rock? The Aborigines, or the first people, call it the huge rock Uluru. Uluru. There's Uluru. That's what the Aboriginal people, or the original people of Australia, call that Uluru. There's always something new to learn about Australia. And here is Australia. And then right here, they said, see that part up there? That's where the Great Barrier Reef is. That's where it is. Lots of different biomes, though, in Australia. Here's another picture of Australia in our big atlas. And then if we were to point out where the Great Barrier Reef is, it's up here between, it even goes almost to Papua New Guinea, and it comes all the way down here, almost to the middle. So it is a very large reef. Okay. Just a quick bit of history about um, Australia and who kind of found the Great Barrier Reef for the first time for um, people who came from Europe. They didn't know about the Great Barrier Reef. Um, a, ex an explorer named Captain John Smith, I'm sorry, Captain James Cook. Um, he and older friends, you might remember Captain Cook because in our, our uh, book about uh, Popper's penguins, they named the penguin Captain Cook. He was a real person, he was a real captain. And he was sent on a mission to go and explore the eastern side of Australia. And they didn't call it Australia at the time. They didn't know what to call it. They just call it a New South Land. So Captain Cook went there and he did find Australia in the east. And he called it New South Wales. Wales is a place in England. And so he called it New South Wales. Um, he was exploring that whole side of Australia when his ship ran into what he thought was rock, but it wasn't rock. It was part of the Great Barrier Reef and his ship got stuck and it was stuck there and they couldn't get it off the reef. So, and it got a hole in it and it started to sink. They started bailing all the water out that they could, but they had to patch the ship with some cloth. They had to actually use the sail of the ship to patch it. And they finally waited for the water to come back, the high tide to come back. And they were able to push the ship back out into the ocean and they saved the ship. That was pretty cool. And they didn't know that that was a reef. But once they got the ship repaired, they started exploring up and down that whole coastline. They started exploring the reef. And he was the first person to really record the reef and what it, what, it, what it looked like and how far it went and how, how amazing all the different uh, corals and things were that he found there. That was the first time that people in Europe 
had ever really experienced what a reef was because in Europe they don't see reefs because it's too cold. So that was the first time they had had experience with that. Um, I got that information from this book if you want to check it out maybe from the library where is the Great Barrier Reef and I got all of that information from this first chapter there's Captain James Cook and he explored the reef and Australia he also older friends remember he was the first one to explore south or go past the um, the Arctic uh, circle. So he was the first exploring captain to go south of the Arctic circle and he knew that there might be a land down there but he couldn't get to it. That was hundreds of years ago. But I got all of that information from this book and there they are throwing things off the ship because they thought if they lightened the ship they might be able to push the ship off of the reef but they couldn't do it. They had to patch the hole so they could get the boat back out into the water. Okay, so um, today you're going to be um, looking at some different videos. Your field trip is about where is the reef and the different zones, the different levels of water in the reef and the type of animals you might find in each zone and what kinds of reefs are there? That's one of your activities too. So hopefully you'll get those all done today. Um, another activity we have for writing today is to write a friend. Yeah, your friends might be missing you, so you could draw them a picture and write to them. Please include your name, that it's from you, and who it's to, and I'll be sure to get it to the right person, okay? You just put it on, on Seesaw, and I will send it to the person that you wrote to, okay? It'll be fun, it'll, it'll be like getting mail, okay? So hopefully you'll get all of those things done. We want everybody to have a, li uh, a note from uh, your friends today. Or you can write more than one friend too. You could write two or three friends and draw them pictures and write them a note, okay? Um, today's show and share is Charlie and Evelyn. And tomorrow, the Williams are up. William and William, your turn tomorrow for show and share, okay? Um, I everybody have a great day today. Enjoy learning about the coral reef and where it is and what it is. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. And make sure you post all your wonderful work. I'm enjoying looking at it. I can't wait to see your coral reef pictures and maybe your word wall. After you read some books and you get some vocabulary, you can make a word wall and that way you'll have all your new words that you've learned about from the coral reef in one spot. That'll be fun. Okay. I will see you tomorrow, my friends. Have a great day. Bye.